you are a professional working in the supply chain and the distribution uh, industry, you know how important it is to improve your growth rate strategies, how to deal with ongoing supply chain disruptions, how to handle the bottlenecks, and so much more. And you don't need general ideas. You need specific strategies. You need solutions. And we have them for you today by Mike Marks, the managing partner at Indian River Consulting Group. Hi, Mike. Good to have you on today. Good to see you, Jeff. Uh, Mike is going to present at ISSA Show North America. He's going to bring solutions to all these issues that many of you have. His presentation is in the is an all access pass event. The name of it is Cash Flow Management as a Competitive Weapon, and it's Monday, November fifteenth at ten thirty a.m. Pacific time. Of course, in Vegas at the show. Mike, I love that title. It's important, and I love the use of the word weapon. So tell us all about it. Why should people be there to learn about this topic at the show? Well, and, and I like the title too, but unfortunately for, for most distributors listening to this, Jeff, they're going to look at that. It's really boring. All I want to do is how to grow sales and the rest of it. But, but we have never paid attention to how do we leverage cash flow and what is the impacts. We're all talking about how we come up with from the pandemic now and the new normal. And part of the thing that's interesting that you and I were talking about, it's not the winners. It's not about doing the same things better. It's about doing new things. And so part of this is really leveraging your capital structure in terms of how you do it. As an example, everybody's dealing with these huge supply chain problems and, and, and they're not going to be going away very fast. You know, the suppliers that go, oh, it's only going to be another month or two. You know, you say, you know, you're, you're on some kind of recreational pharmaceuticals because a lot of this stuff's much more complicated. So, but basically if we, ha if we have limited products, because what's happened is that distributors have typically Salespeople go out to sell. They're going to anything they can sell to anybody. They bring an order back and maybe we have to stock a line. And, and so we have the customers, the salespeople got, not necessarily the customers that we want. And so when you have limited supply, a lot of people are talking about allocating. Instead of giving it all to your high volume, low margin guy, you just, because they're, they're getting shortages from everybody and they're, everybody whines. There's no way to make them happy. I can use that hard to get product to open a door with a customer I've always wanted. And, and when you start looking at, at cash flow and do, what cash flow does, it gives you the opportunity to play a long game instead of just a short game, what kind of order can I get right now? So, so the idea of a competitive weapon, if you set this thing up right, you have the ability to capture new customers that in the past you may never have been able to get. There's also a lot of other things in, in terms of how do you preserve yourself if you want to go on the offense? Everybody's getting really great comparisons to where they were at 20. 20 was like a giant vacuum cleaner sucking the life out of all of us in the industry. And so sure, the comparisons in 21, everybody's up 40%, 20%, 50%, that all looks good. But what, what's already happening and suppliers are already complaining about it, people run out of cash really fast. At the beginning of the year, everybody had, we had paycheck protection program money. Anytime you go through a downturn like this and reduction, you collect, you collect receivables, you stop replacing inventory. So distributors at the beginning of this year had a lot of cash in their balance sheet and it vaporizes really fast with these high growth rates. And so what happens if people are still thinking about it like it was pre-pandemic, they end up with the wrong inventory, they can't get the inventory they want. And so even though we're talking about cash flow, it's how do you how do you go out against your competitors and offer your customers a better value proposition? A big part of this is understanding, well, I, I, you can tell I get excited about this, but the main thing, think about all the money distributors spend, right? Think about all the money they spend on, on people and money is wrapped up in inventory and receivables and the rest of it. And, and, and so is that money invested with the real opportunities for growth? Because the opportunities for growth now aren't the same opportunities for growth that you had back at the beginning of the pandemic. And a lot of people have those resources misaligned. They're, they're hanging on to things that were really important a year ago or two years ago. And because of that, that money's tied up. They don't have the money to invest where there is growth. So this is about where's the light in the new normal so we go stand the light. So it's a short answer. It's not going to be, yes, we are going to talk about cash. We're going to talk about some practical distributor cash flow things so that they have the confidence. See, if you don't know how much ammo you got in the firefight, you're going to be a little careful. If I know exactly how much ammo I got, I can be much more aggressive because I can pace myself. It's the same thing with cash. So 
it's only an hour, you know, we were talking about this, it's only an hour long. So I'm also gonna include a bunch of links because we always share the handouts and all the materials with everybody. So if somebody's interested in something, they have the links they can click on to get additional information. But we really, since it's only an hour, when we were doing the program design, we figured let's orient this program to those distributors that are playing the game to win instead of those that are just playing it not to lose. I mean, I'm, any, everybody's welcome. Like you say, it's an all access deal more the merrier, but but this is really about how do you play it to win, and it's a lot more fun. So, I mean, that's kind of my, my short answer, and, that, and, uh, I, and I can go, I could actually do the whole deck here right now, because it's obviously very exciting. Well, Mike, maybe we should do the whole thing right now, and we'll just record it and put it out there. Oh, <laughs> let's not do that. Uh, well, I got to tell you, it's really exciting. I got to tell you, people, I have, people are just coming back to doing live meetings now, and you didn't realize, because I've done three conventions now for distributor groups, and, it, and it's kind of like your, your kid in junior high sneaking in the bathroom to grab a cigarette. You feel guilty, but it's fun. And, and we're going to these cocktail receptions, and all of a sudden people are around and they're talking. It, it's exciting, but they all feel a little guilty because we've been locked up so for so long. It's a, you gain so much more when you're face-to-face. -face. I, I kind of lost it with all these Zoom meetings. But when you're there and people can actually see and talk, it the, the amount of information as a speaker, it's so much more fun for me because I know I can have better value in terms of what I give to the people in the room. So I'm really looking forward to not not that Vegas is a bad location either, man. Exactly. And I've sat in your audience, Mike, in the past. I don't believe I ever fell asleep. So anyone that comes, they have that assurance as well. We'll see you in Vegas.